friends, welcome into our spring into yin yoga class. We are very excited to start kicking winter out of this town. This morning, we had a little bit of snow coming down a minute ago. Uh, it stopped for now. Uh, oh, no, that's snow. Yeah. Uh, so, music? yes, today's theme is all about kicking out winter and uh, thinking about spring. So as you're all gathering together, uh, I would ask you to grab hold of a couple of blocks. We don't have two, we only have one. So we're using textbooks for the second block and grab a rolled up towel and uh, have that ready. We've also got a couple of pillows from the bed, some bolsters uh, so that you can have your self supported. Uh, so if you are ready, and on your mats. Namaste. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we will get started. So our first uh, yin pose will be a prone block stretch. So I'm going to ask you to come on to your tummies and take both arms, forearms on either block. So thank you to Martin again for being our yoga demonstrator. He's got both arm, forearms on the blocks and then the forehead is on a rolled up towel so you've got lots of space to breathe are you good see you in an hour yes good awesome all right so hopefully you're all settling into that pose and have everything that you need to get ready i'll give you a few minutes to get organized and we'll start to settle in So as always, let's start to settle in thinking about how our body is set up and lined up and uh, make sure that you're in a comfortable position, that there's nothing hurting, no sharp shooting pain, no dull aching pain. Where we're feeling this right now should mainly be in the chest muscles. So allowing gravity to sink your body down in towards the floor, the mat, and feeling that stretch in your chest muscles. Can you relax just a little bit more into the pose to allow that to happen? If you think that you need another block there, feel free to add another block or another textbook or another pillow, something that'll bring you up a little bit higher, but maybe you're okay. Making sure that you've got space to breathe. Taking your awareness now down to your back. Can you feel any pain there or is it feeling pretty good? If there's any pain, make sure that you bend your knees, <clears throat> maybe take your feet pigeon toed and see if that helps relieve it. Anytime you need to move those legs around, feel free. So if you're feeling pretty good there, let's settle in and come into our breath. Noticing if you're holding your breath and how you can make your breath a little bit more fluid and flowy. We start to think about breathing into our upper backs. And noticing how we can actually feel that air going into the upper back, into the rib cage, into the back. Breathing into your latissimus dorsi, those muscles underneath your armpits. Because it's a little more challenging to breathe into the chest when we're lying on it. And 
Inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the nose. Just taking this time for ourselves to relax, release, and recover. During our practice today, I want to bring awareness to being aware of what's happening in the, in the present moment. I think we all have been guilty of having the hamster wheel running and not being able to shut off other thoughts. So bringing awareness to the present moment and as we do this, let's bring that awareness right into your room, onto your mat. And being aware first of sound. What sounds are you hearing in your space? and bring awareness to smells. What are you smelling in your space? Can you still smell the coffee from this morning's breakfast? Maybe some eggs cooking on the stove. The rubber from the mat. The rubber from the mat. <laughs> And what do you feel right now? Can you feel any air moving around your body? Can you feel sensations in your body? Being aware of what's going on in this present moment, and perhaps setting an intention to be more present in your practice today, more present in your day-to-day -day life. We'll start to come out of this pose, and as we come out, we're bending in through the knees and taking the knees nice and wide spreading them apart, windshield wiper them in one direction and the other direction, giving your spine a nice release there and giving your quadriceps a nice massage. We'll take the feet back down to the mat and just release those blocks, lifting up your head and coming onto your hands. Remove the blocks away. There we go. Take the towel away. And we're going right down into the woods, coming into rabbit pose. So as you come back up onto your knees, take your the back of your head onto the mat. And now bring your knees a little bit closer to your head if you can. And there we go. And take the hands behind the head onto the back, onto your back. Take your hands onto your butt. Sorry, onto your butt. There we go. And then take those arms up and overhead keeping the hands together and make sure that the back of your head is on the mat. There we go. So you want to make sure that the head is completely flat. 
And here we are in rabbit. So we're going to be covering a lot of the animals in, in the woods today. The first one is rabbit. We'll be going to look at butterflies and frogs and dragons. So as we do this, you'll feel the release in your chest, a little bit of a rebound and noticing any stretching you've already done in through your chest from that last pose. This is a great inversion as well. So we're sending lots of blood into the head much quicker than it normally would go. Enjoying the release in the shoulders. The release in the chest muscles. And we're not going to hold it here too long because this can be a little bit scrunchy on the neck. So we'll release the hands back down to the mat. And take those arms right out on in front if that feels good. Forehead to the mat and give yourself a nice child's pose or puppy dog pose. Either one is good. Just again, feeling that opening you've created in your chest muscles. And if that's feeling pretty good now, we'll come into our second yin pose. We are coming into a seated pose, nice and easy. So grabbing hold of a block if you need it to sit up on. Otherwise, if you feel pretty good sitting cross-legged, you don't need the block. So sitting up nice and tall, cross your legs, there we go. And we'll start by just lifting up only if you need it. If you don't feel you need the block, you don't need them. Sitting up nice and tall. Draw those shoulders up towards the ears. And then exhale, take those shoulders right back down the ears. We're going to open up a little bit more in through the chest now, taking the hands right behind the back in reverse prayer. So the hands pushing together somewhere in the middle of your back and those elbows come out. Sitting up nice and tall and breathing there. That should feel really nice on the shoulders, on the upper back and on the chest muscles. So as we sit here, start to soften the eyes closing them seeing if you're holding on to any tension anywhere and seeing if you can let that go if you're a little bit past the edge of comfortable then maybe back the arms down a little bit down the spine so that you feel like you can hold that position for a little bit longer And if everything's feeling good, let's think about the breath, making sure the breath is flowing in through the nose and out through the nose. Keeping a consistent, steady, steady breath. Are you still in the present moment? We often go for walks in the woods and quite often find myself drifting away somewhere else when I'm not really present. And it's the sound of the peepers or the birds that suddenly bring you back into the present. It's noticing what's happening right here, right now, that's so important, being present. Smelling the smells of spring as you take a walk in the woods. Feeling that cool, cool fresh air on your cheeks. Noticing the sounds of frogs and peepers and birds in the woods. 
being present. And start to slide those hands down the back. And as you come out of this pose with your hands, just make little circles with your wrists, pressing one hand back and the other hand back, allowing the forearms to stretch and release. We'll do a few more uh, poses for the arms and the shoulders. But we're going to change the way we cross our legs. So there's two options here. We can take the legs into fire log or into shoelace. So in fire log, we've got the right foot on top of the left knee and the right knee on top of the left foot. That's fire log. Or in shoelace, if you're a little bit more flexible, maybe you want to take the right knee right on top of the left knee. Like so, just see what feels more comfortable. You'll feel the stretch in through the right side of the glute. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yep. Now, for our next trick, take the right arm underneath the left arm into eagle arms. We're just gonna let that sit and marinate for a couple of breaths here. And then eventually we want to move this one forward and take the arms onto the knees. So make sure that you're in a place that feels good. And if you feel like fire log would be a little bit easier, maybe take it into fire log. And if you're in fire log, you may need a block to rest your elbows on to come down onto. So we can play around here with pillows or blocks. How are, you, how are you doing? Do you need anything? Do you want to come <clears> under there? Just that? a little tight, yeah. You feeling good that you can forward fold a little bit? Yeah. And maybe your hands can't touch together. Maybe they need to stay apart. All right. Lots of twisting around going. Feeling a little bit like a pretzel now. Make sure that you're in a position that feels good. Are you at an edge that feels right? Make any changes that you need. And settle in. Back to the breath. Flowing in through the nose and out through the nose. Going back to the woods, imagining yourself if you're in fire log. That lovely smell of camping. You've got that crackling sound of the logs sending off sparks into the air. That beautiful smoky smell of the woods, the pine trees blowing in the wind. crackling fire. And as the fire starts to crackle, you feel the cool, fresh air against your face. And as the sun starts to set, the frogs and the birds Make those lovely noises in the woods. Spring.
We'll start to come out of this pose now, lifting the elbows up first. And just take a few shoulder rolls back, releasing those shoulders. A few groans before we go to the other side. So we're gonna change the cross of the legs wherever you were. Change the way that you set up your legs. So we've got a choice here, either shoelace or fire log. And this time we take the left arm under the right, crossing those arms over. Nice tall spine before you start to fold that over. And again, if you need blocks to support you here, feel free to grab a block or a bolster so that you can rest your head down and relax. In yin, we want to be able to relax into a pose. We don't want any struggle here. Once you arrive in your posture, you should be able to fully relax and notice that you're holding no tension anywhere in any muscles. That feels right. Breathe. In through the nose and out through the nose. Again, noticing as maybe your chest is a little bit more squished that you can actually breathe into your upper back. Send lots of air in and out of there. Noticing the sensations going on in your body. being aware of this moment, being present. Are there any new sounds in your house at this time? Any new sensations? A smell, a sound, a taste, a feeling? Start to sit right back up, release the arms. Take those shoulder rolls again, and we'll release the legs. We'll take a little windshield wiper with the feet and the knees, but a seated one, so we're moving the knees in one direction and then the other direction, just like that, allowing those hips to release. Let the feet nice and wide. And back into the woods we go in search of butterflies. So we're going to take the feet together and open up in through the knees, coming into butterfly pose. So we have the feet together and the knees are open nice and wide. And if you want, you can have some blocks under there. Are you okay? Yep. Pillows under there? Do you want to sit on a block? Do you feel like you're nope. leaning back a lot? Nope. No. Okay. All right, so if you're comfortable there, you can you can sit on a block. You can take your knees and have them supported by pillows here so you can just release any tension in through the inner thighs. And we're just holding on to the feet for now. Giving this the inner thighs an opportunity to start opening up and feeling more of a stretch in through your hips. 
If you're pretty comfortable there, we'll soften in through the eyes. And try to release the grip a little bit more on your feet so you can allow your shoulders to relax and your elbows to relax a little bit more. You don't want to hold any tension. Take that struggle out. And back to breath. The breath is always there, always waiting for us to be aware of it. So often in our day, we hold our breath. It's so important to be aware of your breath. Holding the breath brings on higher levels of anxiety. If you find yourself during the day just taking a big sigh, that's a healthy thing. That means that you needed to let some stress go. <sighs> let it go anytime you need to. Constantly checking in to make sure that you're not holding on to any tension. Staying in the present moment. Just allowing the sensations to happen. And being aware of those sensations. Where are you feeling this right now? So this is a three part pose. Part two, we're going to come into a half butter, butterfly. So in half butterfly, we've got one leg straight and then the other one is still bent. We're gonna grab a hold of the foot and stick it right on top of that straight leg. And you may need a second one. And as you do this, we'll take the arms up nice and high, inhale. And as you exhale, fold right on over those pillows. So you should feel nicely supported there. Relax your head down, relax your neck. And here we're feeling the stretch in the hamstring on the right side. If rounding in through your spine doesn't feel good for you then sit up a little bit taller and hinge from your hips and come down a little less far decide what feels right what do you need today I question whether or not you're holding any tension and how you could let that go. Could you relax your shoulders a little bit more? Can you relax your jaw, your neck? Ask yourself if you've gone too far and if you need to back it off a little bit. Are you breathing? In through the nose and out through the nose. And 
back into the woods we go, seeing the beautiful butterflies floating around. In Canada, we see lots of the monarch butterflies, those beautiful orange butterflies. If you had micro-perfect hearing, can you imagine the sound of the fluttering of their wings as they explore through the pine trees and the lovely woods in front of you, the smells of spring. They flirt around and flutter around the trees. And we'll start to come out of that side. Bring yourself all the way back up. And we'll switch on over to the other side. So now we've got the left leg straight and we're tucking the right foot in. Need those pillows again. All right. So we'll inhale to sit up nice and tall, creating a tall seat first before we exhale right on over that straight leg. Relaxing and recovering and resting as you arrive, allowing your body just to dribble right on over those pillows like a rag doll. Everything suddenly just releases. We go back to the woods. Noticing the sounds, the smells in the woods. Noticing that butterfly floating by like a gift, showing off its beautiful color, its strength and flexibility as it flutters around. Sit, sitting and noticing. Really watching it rather than just letting it flutter by. Breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. Being present. And we'll start to lift up again from this pose, releasing those pillows. Hold on to them nice and close. We have one more version of this, part three. We're going to go into straddle pose. So the legs are wide, wide, wide. Again, if you want, you can sit up on a block so you don't feel like you're falling backwards. Give it a try, see if you like it. And we're going to slide those hands right on down the legs. We'll grab hold of the pillow so you can support yourself a little bit there. Pillow play. Oh, that looks lovely actually. So we've added a block here so that Martin wasn't leaning backwards. So he's a lot more farther forward and it allows him to relax into it a little bit more. 
Do you want something for your head? No? You good? Yeah. So you can see that the body's completely ragdolled right on over the legs. And we're still feeling the stretch in the inner thighs in straddle pose. So for the more flexible people, maybe you've got your elbows down on the floor. And if the elbows are down on the floor, you could grab a pillow or two and just have your head and forehead relaxed onto the pillows. It's really important to muck about a little bit to find the right pose, the right position for you. If we're going to hold on to the poses for longer, we want to be comfortable. Just feeling the sensations and the releasing. But we don't want to be in a place of sitting in pain because then that becomes your focus. In this pose, I think about horseback riding, straddling a horse. So let's take ourselves back into the woods. If you've ever been on a horse, it's a great feeling. Cantering through the woods, trotting through the woods. The freedom for the horse and for you to be out in the woods. Your hair flying in the wind. Just you and a horse. That lovely feeling in the springtime when the horse is happy to be able to trot or canter when it's not icy or snowy anymore. Ah, oh, the smell of horse. If anybody's been on a horse before, I love the smell of horse. Combination of the saddle and the horse smell. So liberating, so free. The sound of the horse clomping on the trail. The fresh air against your cheeks. The power of the horse. Listening to his breath now, inhaling and exhaling strongly as you breathe alongside with him. We'll start to come out of this pose now, lifting the body back up. First, and releasing the pillows. And we definitely need to twist our spine coming out of all of those forward folds. So we'll take the left leg straight and take the right foot right on across, holding on to the right knee nice and close with your left arm. See if you can set yourself up a little bit taller. We'll inhale together, reaching the right arm up. And as you exhale, take the hand right behind you and twist to the back as you're sucking your belly in. Counter poses are really important in yin. It just kind of gives you that rebound effect. So you can allow that release to happen. And stretch the opposing muscles. We'll come on back to center and switch to the other side, taking the left foot over towards your right thigh. Grab hold of your left knee, sit up super, super tall, reach the left arm up. And exhale, take the hand behind you, sit up even taller as you twist to the back, sucking your belly in.
and we'll inhale to come right back to center. Oh, all right, dragons are next. So we're gonna come into dragon pose with the foot down on the mat and the left, right foot on the mat, left knee down on the mat. So we got the right foot on the mat yeah. and the left foot. So again, this is a three part set. So we're trying to reach that foot farther forward. There we go. And now stretch forward, taking your hands down on either side of the foot. Is that a little far for you? Okay. Now press your left hip down towards the mat. Left hip. Uh, with both hands on either side. Like this. There we go. There we go. So now you can see we've got the left hip stretching. <clears throat> you okay there? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So here we are in part one of Dragon, flexing and stretching in through the left hip. To add a little bit more, you may want to squeeze your left glute a little bit and then release it. And see if you can press the left hip down a little bit more from there. And if you're where you need to be, hang tight right there. And breathe. So this is much more of an active yin pose. I'm not going to hold it for too long because we've got three versions of it that we're going to play around with. And we have two sides. Are you still in a place where you can breathe or have you pushed that sensation too far? We'll come into part two now. So taking both hands inside the right knee, you can come onto a block or onto a pillow. Taking the hands down or maybe the elbows down, maybe two pillows there. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, now take both hands or both elbows onto the block or onto the pillow. And now remember how you pushed your left hip down. Mm -hmm. See, you can do that again. Okay, mm -hmm. do you need anything more? Go for more pillows? Yeah. Oh, no? Okay. <laughs> All right. So this can be quite difficult if you're a little less flexible in through the hips. So you may need, as Martina said, maybe three or four more pillows. That's she's fine. And uh, just relax your head. Okay. Yeah, so that we can get the head rested onto a forehead or onto a block or pillow. That's great. Lots of big hip stretching here. This can bring up all kinds of emotions for people. Just be aware of that first. If something comes up, just acknowledge it and let it happen. And if you're at your edge, hang tight and come back to your breath. Back to the woods we go. We don't have dragons in our woods, but we certainly have dragonflies. They're an incredible thing to watch at night. Maybe if you're sitting by the fire, that crackling fire. Noticing the light 
that they shine as they move around the woods and you never know where they're going to pop up next. I'm not so sure they arrive in the spring, but hopefully we'll have some summer weather next and we'll be able to see the dragonflies. What? All right, <laughs> feeling that. We're going to just add a little bit more to that and that would be to take the knee out towards the side. So keeping the foot where it was. Let's take the foot here so you can get Yeah, okay. I don't think he's having fun anymore. <laughs> no, this is quite a big stretch. So we got the foot on to the side and the knee opened out to the side. So for those of you who are still happy there, you can take it there. And if you need to take a break, maybe go back into child's pose. Okay, go back to child's pose. Yeah. Okay, so you guys hang tight where you were, taking the knee out to the side. Unless you need a break, come into an extended child's pose. There we go. And then we'll come on out of that pose, lifting your head up off the pillows, releasing that leg, coming back into your child's pose. Make any movements that you need. Maybe a few cat cows. Dragons are big stretches for the hips. Oof. All right, there's another side. All right, so we'll start in the first dragon. Dragon number one. If you remember, we had the foot out in front and just the knee down on the mat. Stretching out through the hip. That's it. So making sure that the foot is far enough forward so the knee doesn't go over the toes. And now we're stretching out. So we're trying to press the right hip down towards the mat as comfortably as you can. Just finding a nice edge, but nothing that starts the muscle shaking or grumbling. If you're where you need to be, come back to your breath. Breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. Noticing again if there's any new sounds in your space. Being present. And we'll start to switch it up, coming all the way down onto your pillows or your blocks, onto your elbows. Allowing your forehead to relax and release down onto your pillow, onto your elbows, or maybe onto the floor. So this is the more flexible version of it. Lots of stretching going on here. Again, 
and we need to be present here. We need to make sure that everything feels right. And if it doesn't, we adjust. We do not need to feel any pain in yin postures ever, ever, ever. Adjust as you need to. Now we're going to come out onto the side of the left foot. Bring the knee right on over to this side. So you're standing exactly how you were, just going on to the side of your left foot. And this stretches in through the IT band. And you can see he's starting to get really uncomfortable, so I'm going to pull him out of this. And go back into child's pose, my child came in. Yeah, this isn't comfortable for him. And it's really important to be aware of that and let it go when you need to. So if you've reached your edge there, come on back into your child's pose. Or maybe you feel like you need to stay there a little bit longer. Take a few more breaths there. And if you're still in dragon pose, come on out of your dragon pose, lifting yourself all the way up off those pillows and come all the way back into your child's pose. Or puppy dog. Or if there's anything else you need to do, just go for it. Make this practice your own. We have one final yin, yummy yin pose to go, and that's called frog. So we're coming onto our tummies with the knees nice and wide apart. And here again, if you need a pillow, you can take a pillow. So the knees are nicely wide apart. And we're taking our tummy onto the mat. We're taking bend in through the knees. So is that feeling better, having feet together? You can have the feet together if you like, or you can bring your knees up a little bit closer towards your belly there. Lots of different versions of frog. For the more flexible, your feet would remain on the mat or on the floor. For people with back issues, you want to take your feet together maybe a little bit more. Turn your legs into a diamond shape. You could take pillows underneath those legs. You want a pillow under your leg? Again? No, no, thank you. No, you're good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't have to hold on to anything. And just take take your right cheek onto the mat. Relaxing in through the shoulders as much as you can. Imagining yourself back in the woods again. Seeing that frog on the lily pad. Just watching it. As it's waiting for something to nibble on, a fly or a bug. Oh. Or what? Or a horse. Or a horse. <laughs> Jump onto the horse. Or a horse fly. Again, just being present, taking time to notice what's right in front of us instead of walking by it in a hurry. Taking time to sit and be still. And notice what's happening right in front of you. Kids are much more present than grown-ups. 
We always have so much more going through our minds or more things to worry about. Remembering when you were a child and you noticed the worms and the frogs and the bugs in those words. We all have the ability to see things and feel things. We sometimes just don't tap into them. We're so, so blessed and lucky to be able to imagine and see things that we've seen before. It's like transporting yourself into another world, a place you've been before, and imagining the smells and the sights and the sounds. We're so, so lucky that we're able to do that. So even though at this time we're not able to travel to different countries, we can still go there. If you've been there before, you know what it looks like. You know what it sounds like, what it feels like. You know what those woods feel like. Take yourself there. Because we can. All right, it's time to wrap things up. So this was our last pose. So we'll just do a little counter pose, keeping those knees uh, bent. Just windshield wiper your legs in one direction and the other direction. We've done this one before today. Allowing those hips to release a little bit more. Massaging the quadriceps. And find your way all the way back up to seated. Coming on to hands and knees. Take any counter poses that you need. Maybe a cat cow. And we'll come right onto our backs into Shavasana. When you're ready. Legs are straight, the arms out to the side, palms facing up towards the sky. How are we feeling? Mm, I'll think about it. <laughs> I hope you guys are feeling well, stretched, relaxed, released, recovered. I hope you've had a lovely time in the woods with me today. Too many bugs. Too many bugs. The bugs aren't out yet because it's too cold. I have one of my favorite t-shirts on today. Do more of what makes your soul happy. Do more of what makes your soul happy. So as we wind down in Shavasana, take as long as you need. Relax, release and recover. And feel free to take yourself back into the woods just one more time. Namaste. A great, great weekend and a wonderful afternoon.